PM if you would like to um, if you would like to approach when he when he plugs his headphone back in because he pulled yeah. the, pulled the cord out. Now you've got to learn to work the technology. That's not so good. Alan, good morning. Good morning, John. Um, I listened to Radio Live the other day and Titify Harawira was on, and she was asked when would she be satisfied when all the land claims are settled, and she said they will never ever be settled. And with that attitude, um, can you see light at the end of the tunnel in this area? Yeah, I can, in so much that there have been 59 settlements since the settlement process began. Of those 59, 44 have been concluded by national governments and 33 by my government in the last four years. So we're making great progress. Even somewhere like Tuhoi, where people said, you'll never get a deal, uh, we've essentially got a deal. So that's not even included in the 59. So the bottom line is, I reckon you will. Up north, where she comes from, Three of the five iwi have settled. Napui, which is sort of where she is from, or her iwi, they're very close to settling. So, look, it's going to might take a bit longer than 2014. That's the ambition is to get there by then. But I think we will get through it. I think there'll be some Maori who never want to give up and never will always have claims for contemporary issues like wind, which I think we should utterly reject as a country. But in terms of land claims, I think we'll get them settled. And when this when they settle, can they keep? coming back and asking for more? No, so that's one of the reasons they take a bit longer is because they've got to be full and final and our government would never uh, entertain looking at one that's been completed because it would completely unravel the whole process and I don't actually believe a Labour government would either. Well, seeing uh, seeing he has raised the subject of uh, of Waitangi and and, um, Ms Harawira and what Mm. have you, nasty piece of work as far as I'm concerned, no comment. Um... Why do you submit yourself to such treatment? Every why do you, why do you why do you why lower, do you bother? What, no, no, it's not. Why do you bother? Why do you subject the country, not just you, but the country, to the insults, like sitting around in your car waiting for forty minutes for people to get their lives organised? Yeah, okay. and, and it is an insult to the country. Yeah, and to the office. Um, because, I mean, at the moment I have well, the office holder, but I agree with you, there's the office of Prime Minister and that office should be respected, and, and I agree with that proposition. Okay, so this is the situation. Uh, Waitangi Day itself, the 6th of February, is for the most part actually celebrated with good humour, good grace, and, and uh, quite a lot of uh, fun, I think. I mean, some New Zealanders are ambivalent and say, well, look, it's just another public holiday, I don't really care too much. But, you know, around the country there are lots of celebrations. Even at Waitangi itself, there's quite a festival atmosphere and people come along and have a pretty good time. So we're talking about the day before, which is the 5th. So, okay, I could say, look, I'm not going to turn up and this is just a charade, the sideshow, and, you know, people throwing things at me or punching me or whatever. Why the hell do I need to put up with that? And that's a fair point. On the other side of the coin, the Crown and Maori in 1840, 173 years ago, signed this thing and there are some ongoing... Uh, obligations that that are a result of that treaty. Uh, We can't wish that away. Um, It is what it is. And so um, actually if I don't turn up, you've really got one side of a treaty effectively not, um, I think, engaging in the process. Now, of course, I could go somewhere else. That's right as well because it's uh, typically a bit more confined to the lower Marae. I don't know, I just, I just don't know whether that would actually solve those problems. And, and anyway, my view is the Crown has a good story to tell. We're doing lots of good things. We're not going to give them give in to these crazy sort of bids for things like wind and all the rest of it. But where we are lifting Murray education achievement, where we are solving some housing issues, where we are dealing with historical claims that have merit, then actually this is a government that's got a good story to tell. News talks to me, it's 29... To-